Max Verstappen drove his first baby cart at age four. Lewis Hamilton's father bought him his first second-hand cart at age six. Sebastian Vettel hogged the family cart from his siblings at around age three. But Nicholas Latifi, it would be 12 and a half years before he would even sit in an indoor go-kart. He wouldn't compete in his first competitive race until age 13, and he had to be convinced to even take part in the first place. So why such the late start, and what does it mean by he had to be convinced to even try racing? That's more like it. Nicholas Daniel Latifi's journey started the 29th of June 1995 in Montreal, Canada. He was born the second of his parents' eventual four children. At the age of six months, his family moved to the largest city in Canada, Toronto. Nicky has a real affection to his hometown. He's a big fan of the Toronto Raptors basketball team, and his FIA declared car number is Six, and one of the many nicknames for Toronto is The Six. His family moved to the Six to follow his father's business. Nicky's father is businessman Michael Murdad Latifi, originally from the country of Iran. At the age of 15, Michael and his three siblings fled the political climate of their home in the late 1970s and took a gamble by heading to Canada. Upon reaching their new locations, they all made a living by working at McDonald's, but within a few years, Michael would go on to complete a degree in electrical engineering and get an MBA at one of the top schools in the country. Using his knowledge, he would start a small food processing company known as Sofina Foods that would grow into an industry leader and eventually acquire a variety of other companies and brands. Many of these brands have been seen on his son's car as he has supported him throughout his career, but in addition, in 2018, he purchased roughly 10% of the McLaren Group as an investment opportunity that sources suggest was completely separate from the racing career of Nicky. Besides financial support, his experiences as an immigrant, a successful businessman, and caring family man have been a large inspiration for Nicholas through all aspects of his life. Nicky's mother is Maria Helena Latifi, or Marlena for short. And she also comes from an influential Canadian family who immigrated from Sicily, Italy. For some perspective, her husband has an estimated net worth of around 3.3 billion Canadian dollars. Lawrence Stroll is 3.8 billion CAD, and Marlena's uncle is roughly 6.9 billion. Her uncle Emmanuel Lino Saputo immigrated and convinced his father to start a cheese making business in the 1950s. Saputo Inc. is one of the largest dairy processing companies in the world today. Between Maria and her husband, they care greatly for familial connections, especially between parents and children. Using their wealth, the couple have established golf charity events for medical programs that provide care to mothers and infants. In addition, she's been a big proponent of educating parents on recognizing depression in children and how to deal with and address mental health. It may seem obvious from their backgrounds that Nicholas's parents have the ability to provide nearly anything for he and his siblings. However, they provided him with much more than just material goods. Besides facilitating a nurturing family, they also inspired Nikki with their stories of immigration and rewards through hard work and determination. Latifi has said they have always encouraged him to follow his dreams, take risks, and know that if he can be determined and persevere, success can come from anywhere. However, growing up, Nikki didn't really have any dreams to be a professional race car driver, at least not in the beginning. As a young boy, he says he lived a pretty average life. He was pretty athletic and enjoyed being outdoors and playing sports like basketball. After grade three, Latifi would attend the all boys private Crescent School in Toronto, which is maybe a little less average. When the F1 Grand Prix would come to Montreal, his whole extended family would attend together. His father had an interest in cars, but did no racing himself. Growing up, Nicholas always assumed he would go to university, study business, and be involved in the family company. It wasn't something his family expected their children to do, and instead they encouraged them to follow whatever path they wanted. But Nicky was content to take the family route. Nicky from The Six really enjoys spending time with his family, and this is what got him started in karting. About a year before his first karting experience, some of his uncles and his father started doing track days driving GT cars for fun. Then one weekend while hanging out with his cousins, they went to an indoor kart track in Montreal. When he returned home, he told his father he would like to try and find a location in Toronto to which he, his older brother, and his father could go drive at on the weekends. His father asked his GT driving instructor if he knew any locations, and it turned out the man owned an indoor kart track about 30 minutes away from the Latifi home. 
When aged roughly 12 and a half, the Latifi family would go to the Formula Cartways indoor track in Brampton, Ontario, owned by former IMSA Camel Lights championship runner-up, David Tennyson. On track, Nicholas was fast, especially considering he had no prior racing experience. Tennyson noticed this and suggested to his family that he had some talent and maybe he should try some kart racing. Young Nicholas, however, turned down the idea. He remembered thinking it was a fun activity to do with the family, but he didn't think it was something he could do seriously. After more visits to the track, and more suggestions from the owner, Nicholas agreed to try a kart race just to see what it would be like. In 2009, at age 13, Nicky would take part in an endurance charity four-stroke karting event. It would take place in the rain, and everyone was on slick tires. He says he can remember spinning off track about six times, but he still ended up finishing sixth. After this, he was hooked on racing and started competing in the Rotax Junior Class at both local and national levels. David Tennyson became his driving coach, and they had an interesting issue to address. Most drivers start at a younger age, where karting becomes second nature. Nicky, on the other hand, had to try and learn the science of driving with lessons on a whiteboard to try to make up the years of missing experience. The metaphor he and his coach liked to use was comparing it to learning a language. When you are young, learning your first language it comes naturally. But as you get older, Latifi was trying to learn racing as his second language through study. In his second year of karting, he would finish fourth in the local championship and second in the Canadian National Championship behind Lance Stroll. In 2011, he would move up to the Rotax DD2 class and do the winter tour in Florida, and even compete in Europe for the first time in the Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. In 2012, Latifi realized if he wanted to get involved in the racing cars, this was the year to do it, but he had also become competitive in karts and did not want to stop that either. So he would start by doing two races in the Skip Barber Formula 2000 Winter Series, winning one. A week later, he would drive a Ford Mustang GT in the BMW Performance 200 at Daytona. And before leaving Florida, he would win the Florida Winter Tour in the Rotax DD2 division and finish fourth in the Shifter Kart series. He would spend the rest of the year bouncing between Canada and Europe competing in karting series and full-time in the Italian Formula 3 series where he would get a second place at Imola and a victory at Vallelunga, finishing seventh in the championship. Competing in all these series was an attempt to make up for the years of missing experience. However, he still had to complete his schoolwork, so he became one of the pioneers of the virtual classroom education from his private school back home. It was around this time when Nicholas started to dream of Formula One. He knew if he wanted a chance to make it there, he needed to commit to racing in Europe. He would need to move halfway around the globe alone if he wanted a chance to compete properly. But before that, he would spend the winter in New Zealand driving in the Toyota Racing Series, where he would get a best finish of 6th, ultimately ending up 9th in points. He would return to Europe and compete for Carlin in British Formula 3, where he would finish 5th in points with 2 poles and a podium at Brands Hatch. In 2014, he returned to the USA to participate in the Ferrari-organized Florida Winter Series. This was a non-championship series focused on helping drivers learn more technical knowledge as well as compete. In 12 races, Nicky would get two fastest laps, seven podiums, and four wins, tying Antonio Fuoco for the most in the series. After winter, he returned to Europe, participating in a variety of single-seater categories. Formula 3 for Prima, finishing second at Silverstone. Six races in Formula Renault 3.5, getting a podium, finishing fifth in the Macau GP, and two races in GP2, replacing Daniel App in the final weekend at Abu Dhabi. New Year, back to Florida for some karting, and four races in the Pro Mazda Winterfest where he would get two podiums. You know, once the car starts off complaining, you can't really control what the car does. Uh, so yeah, I just hit one of the big puddles at the exit of, uh, I think, turn three or four, that lined the uphill corner. Back in Europe, he would drive for Arden Motorsports in Formula Renault 3.5. In the previous year, he had driven two races in the Great Britain Porsche Carrera Cup, and this year he would do a further eight races, getting a podium for Team Samsung Super Ultra High Definition TV Racing, which is an interesting team name. Halfway through the year, Nicky would make his way back into GP2 by signing a deal with MP Motorsports that would see him driving in four weekends for the team that had been swapping drivers all season long, as the rest of the field was being mercilessly destroyed by Stoffel Van Dorn. At the 2015 GP2 end of season test, Nicholas would drive for the Dams team and set the fastest lap time. His immediate speed impressed the team and he would sign to drive alongside preseason champion favorite Alex Lynn. The year would start off auspiciously with a second place in his first race at Catalonia. 
However, the team would struggle and ultimately finish the year below expectations. Nikki would only have the one podium and finish 16th in points, but again, at the end of year test in Abu Dhabi, would set the fastest lap time. During this year, the Renault Formula 1 team had also named Nikki as a test driver only 7.5 years after his first time sitting in a cart. However, he would not participate in any free practice sessions in 2016. Moving into 2017, there were some discussions between Nikki and his management of trying to switch teams, but he believed in the quality of people at Dams and was also aware he had much to improve on as well. The year started well with Latifi being fastest in preseason testing in the newly rebranded Formula 2 series. Overall, the year went much better for him and the team. He would score 9 podiums and get his first victory in the Silverstone Sprint Race, finishing 5th in the championship. Again, he wouldn't do any free practice sessions for Renault, but he would do the Pirelli tire test. Overall, this year went well, and heading into 2018, he believed he was ready to fight for the championship. Coming into 2018, Nicholas was signed in as a test driver for the Force India Formula 1 team and was scheduled to drive in preseason testing. In addition, Formula 2 was introducing a new turbo-powered car ahead of the season. Unfortunately for Nicky, he would miss the F1 test and most of the F2 test after being hospitalized by a serious infection. He would, however, finally participate in an F1 free practice session at that year's Canadian GP and would do four more throughout the year. However, back in F2, his performance would be less than the year prior. He would only manage three podiums and one victory finishing ninth in the standings. Reflecting on this year, Latifi says the new car was a big challenge for him and missing preseason testing didn't help. In addition, after working with Dams for two years, they had specific sets of notes to address certain things Nicky wanted in a car, but they didn't match the new car. He says he felt like a rookie again. It wouldn't be until later in the year when things started to come together consistently. He would finish off the year by dipping by the Formula Mexico series in North America where he would start and win two races. Before starting the new year, Nicholas was signed to be the reserve and test driver at Williams. However, if he wanted any hope of competing in Formula 1, he would need to finish in the top 5 of the F2 series to secure enough super license points. Fortunately, he would build on the good momentum from the end of last year by winning 3 of the first 6 races. In the whole year, he would only really have 2 bad weekends at Monaco and Monza. He would finish the year with 4 wins and 8 podiums, second in the championship, 52 points behind ART driver Nick DeVries. He and teammate Sergio Sede Camara would help Dams win the team championship for the first time since 2014 after finishing third two years in a row. At the end of 2019, it was announced that 24-year-old Nicholas Latifi would replace outgoing Robert Kubica and partner George Russell at the Williams F1 team. Finding an option to fill the void at the team was a bit tough. Their previous season performance was poor and they didn't have the budget to afford a big driver contract. In addition, they wanted a qualified and quick driver looking to prove themselves so they would be easy to please and get along with the team. From his time working with the team, they knew Nicky fit these criteria and it was an extra bonus he came with some of his own sponsors, even though the team claimed this was not a requirement to land the seat. Most people didn't expect him to be on pace with George based on their junior records, but they hoped he would learn to grow with the rebounding team. Some people may suggest Nicky has only made it this far in racing thanks to his father's money, but all drivers need financial support of some matter, whether it be provided by a family, a company, or an academy. Some would suggest that a driver shouldn't be able to go so far on family support, and maybe a few years ago I would have agreed with that sentiment. But now I feel a bit different. If a child is thankful and works hard, and their family have the ability to support their dreams, I'd be more disappointed if they didn't help propel their loved ones forwards. Regardless of money, he has met all the other qualifications required to be in Formula 1, super license points, and a junior career where he showed teams his pace and fought for championships. Plus, he's had some standout moments like defending in the 2021 Hungarian Grand Prix, ironically scoring points for the team crossing the line ahead of George, and then getting points a week later in the Spa qualifying event. Meanwhile, he's shown improvements this year by hitting Q3 in Silverstone. But what does this mean for his future going forwards? Personally, I think Nicky is a fine driver, but maybe lacks some natural feel for certain car issues, potentially related to his late start in racing. He's proven in the past, given the time to acclimate to a car that matches his style, he can be fast and competitive, but unfortunately, after certain events this year and several other mistakes over his time in F1, 
I wonder if he won't reach that point before he is off the grid. I wish the best for nearly all drivers, and if his time in F1 comes to an end soon, I could see him maybe returning to some sports car racing like he did coming up the ranks. If nothing else, I find his late start, but eventual rise to the peak of international racing, to be a little inspiring. What was the lap time of uh, Latifi? So Latifi lap time 41.5. Now, I'm writing this part of the video after Nicholas has been announced for not returning to Williams next year, so you decide if this video's timing is bad or good. But thanks for watching nonetheless. In making this video, I realized I haven't covered a NASCAR driver in a little while, and they are coming to the end of their championship season, so I shall go there next. Now, one of the many nicknames for Nicky is King Latifi, and my next driver could be called the King Pin, as he does have several records in bowling. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and if you want to see more, poke around my channel for some other drivers, and be sure to come back next time when we take a look at my next subject. But until then, I'll see you next time on Driver Profiles.